Who could you include in your life that will make your life that little bit easier? A few years back, there was someone who had lots of need, really. They were quite isolated, quite lonely. It was affecting their mental health. It was affecting their physical health. And I saw this person and I thought, I, I cannot take them on as a project. Like I've got too much going on in my world. I, I, I can't take them on. But Nikki and I, we decided to include them in different parts of our life. Like we'd be cooking a meal, we'd have a barbecue, come and sit with us. We're relaxing a Saturday afternoon in the garden, just come hang out with us. But we made a deliberate choice not to perform for this person. You, you know what I mean by that? We invite guests around and like, we're on our absolute best behavior. You know, no one burps, not that you necessarily should be doing that in front of people anyway, but you don't lose your temper. You're like keeping it all buttoned up. You, you keep your fears and your insecurities hidden. You're cleaning the house like seven days before they come or whatever. We made a, a deliberate choice not to do that because living like that's exhausting. That's why I think some of us find church exhausting on a Sunday morning. And so we just lived as normal with this person present for some of the time. And I noticed the improvement in them because they're getting that relational interaction and involved in family life. But not only that, they did some of the cleaning for us, <laughs> which is very helpful. And so it was a win-win. And the reason I mentioned that story is because that's the essence of how Christian discipleship is meant to take Place. It is this inclusion of people in what we're doing in our world that brings them and us into a healthier, more fulfilling life. Go with me to Acts chapter 15. We're going to read verses 36 to 41. And I want you to see that this is a central principle in how Christianity, the way of Jesus, is intended to function. Father, speak to us through your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. Now, Barnabas wanted to take with them John called Mark, but Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus but Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Churches aren't strengthened just through teaching or internet downloads or letters. They're strengthened through relationship. That's why Paul's saying with Barnabas, we need to go and visit these churches. We need to be with them. When Jesus called the first disciples, he said to them, follow me. Not just follow my teachings, Follow me. Come be with me. This is how Christian discipleship takes place. And in the dispute that follows over John Mark, what I really want us to see here is the dispute was not over whether to take someone with them. The dispute was over who to take with them. Because discipleship includes taking someone with us on the journey. So I want you to think, who are you taking with you on the journey, because this isn't just the apostles thing, you know, the apostles take someone with them. This is Christianity 101. This is the pattern that Jesus set when he gathered his 12 and he sent them out two by two, and then he had 72 and he sent them out two by two. It's the pattern we see right at the beginning of the book of Acts and all the way through the book of Acts, which got John and Peter going into the temple. There is something about taking someone with us on the journey that enriches us and disciples them. Now, when we think of adding people to our lives, we think, oh my gosh, that's gonna be hard work. They're gonna drain me. I think that's because we've got a wrong idea of how discipleship functions. It's actually a lot harder work to set up some complicated program of training rather than just including people in what we're already doing in our lives. And the other issue, of course, is our shame. We don't want people to see our real lives. But the great thing is the Bible just includes all these documented stories of people's real lives, people falling out with each other. From my reading of Acts, I suspect Paul had a problem with his temper. Later on, we're going to see Paul loses his temper at the high priest, curses him, 
says, God strike you, you whitewashed sepulchre. And then he realizes it's the high priest and he apologizes. Now, admittedly, he was under extreme pressure in that moment, but the point is Paul wasn't perfect. Some of us think the way we reach the world and disciple others is when they see our perfection, but actually it's when they see our process. As we receive the forgiveness of Jesus, and the power to change. What's interesting is later on we find out that John Mark becomes useful to Paul. He referenced that in one of the letters. Now that's probably because of Barnabas discipling him, taking him with him on the journey. But Paul's decision to not take John Mark with him is because he thinks, I can't include this guy because he's not going where I'm going. And that is a question we have to ask when we think about who we're including in our world. Can they travel with us where we're going? Don't chase people who are clearly not interested in the journey that you're on. Invite people into your world, but don't chase those who aren't interested. Wipe the dust off your feet. All right, that's the message. Discipleship's a team game. Who are you including in your walk? And obviously I primarily do mean new Christians, new believers, people joining the church community. But actually even those of us who've been around for like decades, we need to be included in each other's world just to keep that fire going. So here's some practical ways that you can include one another. First thing I'd say is include someone else in your prayer life. I know we think like my prayer life's my prayer life. That's my time with Jesus. But we see Jesus himself inviting other people to come and pray with him when he's going to seek the Lord through the night. He invites Peter, James and John. I know they fall asleep, but the principle is he's included them. One of the things I've learned to do is to make a phone call 20 past seven every morning to a brother just to encourage them in their prayer life. We share what God has said to us and then we go on into the day. Now, actually, it's flipped. It's now the other way. They're calling me and they're way more consistent in their daily devotion than I am. And they're sharpening my prayer life. You see the principle? You add them, they become a blessing to you. Now, you might not be ready to do that, but what you could do is pray for other people during your prayer time and as you get a scripture or a thought or something you think is relevant to you maybe it's relevant to them text them and they will feel included in your world even though you haven't rung them so include people in your personal prayer time number one. Second thing i'd say is really easy if you eat food do it with other people and i put it like that because sometimes we put such emphasis on it being a big event i've got to put on a big banquet i've got to hoover the whole house and i'm not saying don't clean the house i'm just saying don't put the bar so high it, it's about including people in our lives not putting on a performance if you fancy a coffee or a mcdonald's maybe include someone else. And like I said with the prayer, maybe you're not ready to bring them along to McDonald's with you, but while you're at McDonald's and you're thinking about that person, send them a text. How lovely do you feel when someone sends you a scripture or a message saying, well, just, hey, I was just thinking about you. It just makes us feel recognized, known. Thirdly, it's the church staff. If you're going to the women's event, the barbecue, the small group, the Sunday morning meeting, the special event on a Wednesday night, invite someone to come with you. Include others in your church life. And lastly, let's follow the example of Paul and Barnabas here. If you're doing any kind of leadership, ministry, make it easy for yourself. Get other people to do the work. I'm serious, like elders in the Bible are called overseers. In other words, they don't do the work. They oversee the work and that principle should follow through in leadership where we're actually getting other people to do the jobs. Now, obviously, the main way that you teach people to do the jobs is you do the job and they see you do the job. But include others. Invite them to do it with you. Please, every single person listening to this video, ask Holy Spirit to show you who you can include in your life. And I guarantee in the end, maybe not at first, it will bless you your life, your sense of joy, your sense of fulfillment, your sense of significance, your mental health, even your physical health will be blessed by including other people in your world. All right, let me pray. Lord Jesus, I want to just say thank you for including us in your life. Lord God, I thank you for the warmth of welcome of the Holy Spirit. And we say, Lord, we welcome you in our lives. We love you. Lead us in your way of including others in our world. God, I pray that you would speak to every single one who's been listening to this broadcast about who we can include and how we can include them 
and how actually in the long run that's going to be a blessing. Build your church as healthy families. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Have an amazing week. Never forget you are so, so loved. Let someone else know they are too. God bless.